Hello everyone, I'm Ramona Van Dyken from Out of the Doldrums. Today, let's take some time to discuss the plant Moringa. Have you ever heard of it before? If you're used to typical Western food, chances are you likely have not heard of this plant. Why should you care? Well, Moringa is a nutritional powerhouse. Research is becoming more and more plentiful on this plant, and so far, it's all been great. The Moringa plant, officially known as Moringa oleifera lamb, is also known as the drumstick or horseradish tree. It's native to the dry tropical forests of northwest India and the foothills of the Himalayas. Moringa is derived from a Tamil word, murungai, which means twisted pod. Traditionally, the Moringa plant has been considered medicinal in Ayurvedic medicine. History tells us that ancient rulers included Moringa leaves in their diet routine to keep up mental health and smooth skin. Today, Moringa is found to grow in tropical and subtropical regions worldwide. It thrives in China, South Asia, India, Arabia, Africa, the Pacific Islands, the Caribbean, and the Philippines. Here in Hawaii, it's everywhere. It grows like a weed. All parts of the Moringa tree are edible and they've been long consumed by humans. The flowers, unripened fruits, and leaves are used for cooking worldwide. Almost all parts of the Moringa plant are considered valuable and not just for food. Here are some of the ways you can use the Moringa tree. Food ingredients, of course, nutraceuticals, medicine, water sanitation, animal forage, cleaning agents, fertilizer, charcoal, machine lubrication oil, gum, pulp, rope, tannin, and biofuel production. Some experts consider Moringa the famine food. It's been used to combat malnutrition. The tree is super fast growing. It can grow up to two whole meters in the first year, and it's up to 12 meters tall once mature. The tree will grow well in subfertile soil and the leaves become mature at the end of the dry season, which is when many other sources of food are not available. In addition, the leaves can be eaten fresh, cooked, or stored as a dried powder for many months without refrigeration. Talk about a useful and convenient food source. Different parts of the Moringa tree are used in more than 80 countries to supplement mineral and vitamin deficiencies, especially in breastfeeding mothers and young children. People are even calling Moringa the new kale. One researcher even claims that Moringa is the most powerful nutrient-rich plant yet discovered. Whoa. Why is that? Well, compared to kale, Moringa has two times the protein, three times the calcium, four times the iron, and two and a half times the fiber. Talk about a superfood. It's rare for one single plant to contain that many essential nutrients, and even more rare for these nutrients to be available in high quantities. Moringa checks the boxes on all of that. Let's take a deep dive and look at the phytochemicals present in the Moringa plant. I'm going to lay some science down here. If you're not science inclined, you can skip ahead to this spot in the video. For this, we're going to have to put our science hats on. Ready, set, let's go. Moringa is rich in glucosinolates, just like the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli. The most abundant glucosinolate in Moringa is called glucomoringin. Just like in the cruciferous vegetables, these glucosinolates are quite stable and relatively inert. They have no effect on our body whatsoever. But when we eat said food, the glucosinolates within are enzymatically converted to isothiocyanates with the help of a little enzyme called myrosinase. In the case of Moringa, glucomoringin is converted to Moringin. Moringin, the isothiocyanate from Moringa, is relatively unstable and heat sensitive. But it's this and other isothiocyanates that have been found to have tremendous anti-inflammatory, detoxification, antibiotic, and neuroprotective properties. And get this, Moringin is similar and likely more active than the sulforaphane found in broccoli. Let me say that again, because it's huge. Moringin is more active than the sulforaphane found in broccoli. If you're wondering what sulforaphane is and you want to learn more about it, check out this video. I made it all about broccoli, broccoli sprouts, and sulforaphane. Just like the isothiocyanate in broccoli, the entire reaction is dependent on one enzyme called myrosinase. Both myrosinase and glucomoringin are stored in the moringa plant, but they're stored in separate compartments. The enzymatic reaction occurs when these little compartments or cell walls are broken down, allowing the two compounds to mix and react with each other. 
Ways of breaking down these cell walls would be chewing, blending, crushing, tearing, cutting, grating. You get the idea. One additional note on my rosinase, it's heat sensitive. Therefore, any cooking of the Moringa plant will kill off the myrosinase. Lucky for us though, the glucosinolate portion remains stable. So while eating, we can add some external myrosinase to get the reaction going again. Good sources of this are mustard, daikon radish, and a type of bacterial glucothiocytase found in our own microbiome. The isothiocyanates are what is responsible for the harsh, bitter and horseradishy taste we experience when we consume many of these plants. It's also the same isothiocyanate that seems to be responsible for chemo prevention and other anti-inflammatory effects. So how exactly does Moringan work? It works a lot like sulforaphane. Moringan targets three important pathways in our bodies. It's been shown to activate a pathway called NRF2 which in lay terms could be considered the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant pathway. It shuts down another pathway called NF-kappa-B, which in lay terms could be considered a pro-inflammatory pathway. Lastly, Moringan activates heat shock proteins, which we're still learning a whole lot about, but we do know they're beneficial for overall health and longevity. Moringa is commonly referred to as the miracle tree. Traditional, folk, and Ayurvedic medicine tout over 300 claims on how Moringa can improve or restore your health. Traditional medicine has used Moringa to treat problems like skin infections, anemia, anxiety, asthma, blackheads, blood impurities, bronchitis, chest congestion, cholera, and many other illnesses. Moringa is also commonly used in various healthcare products, including body and hair moisturizers and conditioners. Apparently, Moringa oil was used in skin ointments ever since the ancient Egyptian times. Is there any truth to all these health claims? Are they based on any science or are they just hearsay treatments passed down from generation to generation? What about the research? What about the data? What beneficial effects have scientists been studying in regards to Moringa? Let's review them. The five most studied health benefits of Moringa are number one, antibacterial activity. Number two, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. Number three, cancer chemo prevention. Number four, anti-diabetic activity and stabilization of blood sugar levels. Number five, anti-asthmatic activity. Number one, antibacterial activity. Numerous studies have shown that extracts from the Moringa plant have antibacterial properties against both gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. The antibacterial activity of Moringa extract was observed to be greatest against gram-positive bacteria like Staphylococcus aureus. The majority of these studies though were done in vivo or in a test tube, so we can't really translate that to use in human beings yet. What's more interesting to me in regards to antibacterial activity is that Moringa has been found to be effective against a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori. This bacteria is a major cause of gastritis, gastric and duodenal ulcers and is a risk factor for developing stomach cancer. The World Health Organization actually classifies H. pylori as a carcinogen. Isothiocyanate compounds from both cruciferous vegetables and Moringa have been shown to have antibiotic activity against H. pylori. Also, the concentrations needed to do this were up to 1,000 times lower than those that have been used in the earlier test tube studies against bacteria that I described a minute ago. And more importantly, human studies have been done demonstrating it works in real, live people. Moving on, number two, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. As research progresses, inflammation is being pinpointed as the root cause of many chronic diseases. Moringa appears to have anti-inflammatory effects thanks to its rich isothiocyanate content. One study done in 2014 demonstrated changes in antioxidant profile by measuring biomarkers of 30 postmenopausal women who supplemented with 7 grams of Moringa leaf powder daily for 3 months. Researchers found an improvement in their inflammatory biomarkers. Number three, cancer chemo prevention. Scientists have recently found that Moringa is a potent inhibitor of Epstein-Barr activated Burkitt's lymphoma cells. Of course, again, it's in a test tube and we don't know the effects on real human people though. 
Another study looked at mice and found there was a reduction in skin papillomas or skin tumors in mice that were receiving Moringa extract. There's no doubt when it comes to chemo prevention and isothiocyanates, we need many more studies, much more research, and we need human trials in this area. Hopefully those are coming soon. Number four, anti-diabetic activity. Traditional and folk medicine is full of claims that Moringa lowers blood sugar levels and is good for diabetes. Only recently have scientists begun to look at Moringa leaf extract and its effect on blood glucose levels. One recent study demonstrated that 20 grams per day of Moringa leaves reduced postprandial glycemic blood sugars in human subjects. This was maintained for up to three hours after Moringa intake. They think this effect on blood sugar is due to the presence of terpenoids, which is a chemical that appears to stimulate the beta cells to secrete insulin. One review looking at patients with type 2 diabetes showed that six of seven studies done on humans demonstrated that Moringa was associated with a reduction in either blood glucose levels or hemoglobin A1C levels, which is a measure of long-term blood glucose control. Additionally, this review also showed an improvement in LDL cholesterol with Moringa leaf supplementation. So bonus, number five, improved lung function in patients with asthma. Patients with mild to moderate asthma were given three grams a day of finely powdered Moringa seeds for three weeks. Researchers found significant improvement in lung function parameters, including an improvement in lung volume, pulmonary function, as well as a significant reduction of symptoms. Participants had less shortness of breath, less wheezing, and less chest tightness. They also reported less cough. Sounds pretty promising, but is Moringa safe? And can everyone just take it without worrying of toxicity? This paper reviews just that. In this paper, the statement is made that, quote, no adverse effects were reported in any of the human studies that have been conducted to date, end quote. The authors then go on to state that various preparations have been and continue to be used around the world as foods and as medicinals without the report of ill effects. So it's been safely used for a long time. That being said, there's a few concerns. Consuming large amounts of Moringa may lower blood pressure and slow heart rate. This is because of the alkaloids in the plant, and it's actually a good thing if you have high blood pressure. You just don't want to overdo it by consuming too much at once. Next, there are some concerns that Moringa can interfere with fertility. Researchers have reported uterine contractions from consuming Moringa bark. With this in mind, to be on the safe side, women who are pregnant or trying to become pregnant should not consume Moringa until we know a little more. Well, I hope you learned something about Moringa in this video. Stay tuned for an upcoming video where we make a powerful aqueous extract of Moringa, also known as Moringa tea. I sincerely hope you learned something valuable and applicable to your individual health journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so please comment below with your thoughts on the video and any questions you may have regarding the information provided. Until next time, aloha.